Dude, have you ever seen uh, uh, fucking that Ron Burgundy movie where he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I just had like a rush of panic. Like, what what do I do with my hand? I'm just gonna slowly do this as we're talking. What is up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. Once again, you are watching and listening Nerds the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast where we celebrate everything nerdy, everything nerddom. And uh, speaking of which, I got a pretty awesome and uh, I would say nerdy, after my own heart, guest with us today. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. What is up, guys? My name is StuTube, a huge JRPG fan, primarily PlayStation 1 era stuff, the games I grew up with, with uh, as a kid. That's me. And uh, he's, a, he's a YouTuber, right? Oh, yeah. If yeah, I haven't said uh, that already. It's okay. I'm a big fan as well. I think he's... I've, I've watched his stuff, and uh, one of the recent things I've been watching with him is um, Chrono Trigger, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead and give me some of your nerd cred. You kind of did already talking about, like, uh, talking about well, your, your PlayStation 1 era stuff, but what, what kind of games do you like? What, what makes you a nerd? Man, probably the first thing I can remember getting into that was nerdy would probably be, like, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Mm. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, the classic Toonami stuff that was oh, around yeah. in like the late 90s. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where my story really begins. So like uh, the Dragon Ball Z where it was all mostly filler, you know, the whole, uh, I'll yeah, get you, Frieza! And, like he's like holding the you know, the uh, spirit <laughs> yeah. bomb for like five episodes, you know, inner monologue. Right. One you know? fight takes like half a season. Yep. Yeah, you guys yep. are lucky. You guys are lucky now. We had to deal with that shit. They get right to the freaking meat and potatoes and stuff now. Yup. <laughs> You're talking Dragon Ball Super, I think oh. it's called. I haven't even seen or GT. Kai. I pretty much, I kind of fell off the Dragon Ball Z bandwagon uh, uh, with Kid Buu, I think. I think that was, yeah, that's that's okay. where I kind of kind of fell off the bandwagon. Uh, so so you like anime. You like video games. Um, yup. That, that's good. Um, so tell us about your YouTube channel. All right, so <clears throat> I was, I mean, my YouTube channel kind of started, I was actually, I watched a guy named Super Derek. Great guy. Like, great guy, yeah. Uh, I, I probably watched him off and on for like maybe like a year, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really like into social media a whole lot or like really into YouTube a whole lot. I mean, I watched YouTube a lot, but I didn't, I would never comment or really interact. Um, so after about like a year of like watching all of his old retro jrpg reviews and stuff i was like man i need to i need to jump in there and do some of this stuff because i've played a lot of these games kind of it really started with uh i'm a huge final fantasy 7 fan also mm -hmm. and i noticed I, my girlfriend actually bought me a ps4 and i seen that final fantasy 7 was like the original playstation 1 version was on the on the psn store so i'm like yeah i'll get it maybe i'll convince my girlfriend to play she played for 10 minutes and then she was like no i don't like this <laughs> so I finished, I, I took off where she where she left off at, and then I realized I could stream it to YouTube, and my intent wasn't necessarily to start a channel. I just figured, like, you know, th I've played this game so many times, I'm always kind of daydreaming and thinking about it, so let's do this, and I'll be able to have all the game play and be able to go back and revisit all the cool moments in the game, and then people just kind of started to watch me, and they kept showing up, and... Uh, so I was like, screw it, let's 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 see how far we can push it. I actually, uh, one of the first people that ever started watching me was a, uh, a user by the name of Andreas underscore Wijaya. I don't know, his last name's hard to pronounce. He's from Indonesia. Awesome. And that he, he actually still watches me to this day, like two years it's later. kind of a, kind of a... It was an oops moment. Pretty much, yeah, it was an oops moment, yep. But it's one of those happy, happy accidents, you know, like if you want to call it that. It's... Yeah. Uh, it's it's one of those things where you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this, and then next thing you know, you're attracting attention, and you're just like, oh, you know what, this is, well, I appreciate that. Like, wow. Yeah, it, it was cool. Um, you know, once I kind of started to get towards the end of the game, I actually had like 14 consistent viewers, like, for like two hours straight each stream, and I'm just like, wow. That's people, very awesome. People, people like me. They really <laughs> like me. What's your favorite RG RPG or RPG in general? It's a really hard question, and I knew... I knew going you knew it was coming. Ask me. Yeah, I knew it was coming. It's really hard to like give like a definitive answer because like my my long term goal is to play every single one that was released on the PlayStation One. So there's a lot that I haven't played. So as of like right now, out of all the games that I've played, I would say 
And even then, like, it's not a really a... I can't... It's hard to give a definitive answer, but I would have to say that probably my favorite so far would be Legend of Dragoon. And the reason I say that yes. is because, like... The game is so good, but, like, so few people have played it, and, like, no one ever talks about it. And, I mean, if if you really give it a chance and you actually, like, push it all the way and get through, like, the it has a real slow beginning, it it really becomes, like, it's a heavy hitter. It really is. It, it's a great game. It sucks you in. The story does. It's, it's a very good, yeah, I agree with you, and it's very have underrated. You, have you played it? Oh, I've pl- Heck yeah, I played that game. <laughs> right on. You know? Yeah, so you, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it's it's just, man, it's it's severely overlooked. Oh, severely. well, the and, audio, I mean, the music in that game alone, the, the very first song that plays in the, the opening, you know, the two, right. the two the two women who are, like, syncing their voices, like, I have that song somewhere on, on a hard drive somewhere around here that I just listen to when I want to freaking, like, I miss that game, you know? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, like, talk about... Uh, eyes on me from final fantasy 8 being like oh it's they actually have like a real song and legend of dragoon had it too yeah a lot of jrpgs actually have like a re- actual song somewhere where there's actual lyrics in a yeah but i agree with yeah, you it was very heavily overlooked it was legend of right dragoon was right it. the the very beginning of the game is like super like really intense you know you're getting chased down by that giant dragon mm-hmm. um Pretty shortly after that, it kind of it really slows down, and I feel like I feel like 95% of the people that have played the game that did not beat it stopped playing when they got they there's a I don't you may not remember this, but there's a dungeon. It's called the Limestone Cavern, and you fight this big Basically. snake thing, and it crawls into this hole in the wall, and it's like then it only its head's poking out. Oh no yeah, I do remember that because it's too high. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I feel like that's where a lot of people quit playing. And right when you make it out of that dungeon, that's when it starts really getting good. The rage quit is high in that part. Yeah, yeah. maybe maybe it's just me assuming that that's where everyone tends to quit if they quit. Um, because what the first time I played it was with like some some neighbor kids um, back in like 2001, maybe. Mm-hmm. I was really young. Anyway, that's where I quit. It's so just did you a, play and really, beat it on the channel? I did. Awesome. Yes. Yep, all awesome. the way to the end. And the yeah, character the, uh, development is great in it. You know, you've got the the love interest between Dart and Sarah, um, and then of course there's there's a character that dies in the game, and then actually makes an appearance later on. Um, <laughs> I, I won't spoil it, but uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. It's you know, Final Fantasy VII is you know it's got Eris, Eris dies, and then you know it's the game's love interest, and it's real sad. But it's like in Legend of Dragoon, it's it's like one of your bros that dies, yeah, which is almost like even more impactful. At, at least I think, you know. I mean, if a, a game story sucks you in, any game story, Legend of Dragoon was good about this. But when a game story sucks you into the point where like you lose a character and you're heartbroken over this fictional character, it's like a book. It's like a good book. Right. It's just good writing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you so far, Legend of Dragoon's your favorite. And that's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, it like I said, it, it's hard to really give like a de- you know a real definitive answer. You know, I, yeah. I I'm choosing the Legend of Dragoon just because I feel like it it deserves to be someone's number one. Um, <laughs> you know, because so many people overlooked it, like I said. But you know, Xenogears is another really really good one that uh, that I kind of still think about from time to time, even though I beat it like a year ago. Um, and if anyone out there's never played Xenogears, you better get a tinfoil hat because that game. That game is absolutely crazy. It's totally something else, man. I <laughs> I won't get into it because it would take like 17 more podcasts to explain the story of that game, but it's it's really cool, especially if you're into like the 90s era Japanese anime. Xenogears oh, yeah. Gears has all the all the iconic anime tropes. You got to watch you beat Chrono Trigger, which was kind of cool. And I know you got some other yeah. stuff going on, so you don't have to tell us everything, but um let's let's get into that. It was your first time playing it. For me, like I like I told you, I even told you in stream, I was I'm I'm an old school gamer. I remember playing that game when yeah. it first came out, and right. that's back when Square <clears throat> Square Enix was just Square Soft, and yeah. Square Soft could do no wrong. What really blows me away with with Chrono Trigger, it's like super rare to ever really see this, but you know a lot of the times, and I, I'm gonna be bringing this up in in a video I'm gonna be uploading I don't here maybe like a week or so, but. A lot of the times when people really, really like a video game, uh, obviously they're going to tell their friends about it and like talk it up and be like, oh, this game's so awesome. And like nine times out of ten, it's not true. You know, you, you might take your friend's recommendation and totally not like it. You know, it just doesn't live up to the hype. But man, 
Chrono Trigger is the only game I've ever played where like every compliment I've ever seen anyone give it turns out to be true. That 100% game, correct. 100% true. I mean, it is there's nothing else like, you know, there's just nothing else like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing that really, really surprised me about it because, I mean, I've heard a lot about it. You know, anyone that plays RPGs, just pretty much anyone has played it. I, I feel like I'm probably the last dude to play it. And yeah, it, it totally lives up to all the hype. And mm -hmm. like, and it's cool too because like <clears throat> when it released, it, it released on the Super Nintendo first. And then literally like 30 days later, the PlayStation 1 came out. And that's the console I started with. And you may have started with the Super Nintendo. You know, so it's like almost like it's almost like a generation gap, even though it's not really like generations of people, but like generations of like console. It's like two, two totally different worlds there. Oh, and, yeah. The, as far as graphics go and whatnot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, just like the availability of mm -hmm. it, uh, to, to oh. play on the PlayStation one. Um, it didn't come out. It didn't come out until I think 2001 in the Final Fantasy Chronicles little bundle. I think you're and, correct. And. Yeah, and in 2001, the Sony PlayStation 2 came out. So it's like there's there's a huge demographic of, of people. There has to be a huge demographic of people that, that have never played Chrono Trigger. You know, slightly younger fans of, like, the JRPG genre. Mm -hmm. And that's that's crazy. It's, well, you, you know, know, they've heard of it eventually, especially the Internet. It, it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm sure that they've heard all the compliments, and, yeah, they, they just haven't played it yet, probably because they don't have a, the ability to play it. Yeah. And of course, about that time, I'm gonna go back to the whole Square SquareSoft thing. About that time, uh, SquareSoft was their 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 music was great in games. Like they could do no wrong. Their storyline was just spot on. Their storylines were just right. spot on. I think Chrono Trigger. I could be wrong, but I think Chrono Trigger came out slightly after. Maybe I'll, when I say slightly, a few years after uh, Final Fantasy VI did three in America. And, yep. Uh, yep. And I think, and at that point, like Final Fantasy. Six was just freaking amazing to begin with, yeah. and then you know to, to this day, despite graphics and whatnot, you know uh, aging and what whatever, it's still one of my favorite games. It's still one of my, but that's Final Fantasy Six. Chrono Trigger blew that out of the water because the they just took what they had there and went went and just rolled with it. Music, right. the music's amazing. Uh, the storyline's amazing. Anything that they can successfully tell a uh, a time traveling story in my opinion is worth looking into that's not too like mind fucky again um right and, and they they successfully did that you know and then we got they, chrono cross later on yeah yeah they did um so yeah it's it, it it's pretty it's really crazy to me because i actually you know I, i'm in the middle of working on a video so i've been kind of like researching on all this a little bit final fantasy 6 came out I believe it was either a year or six months before Chrono Trigger, and if you look at like the 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 overall like quality of the game and like the graphics and the way everything looks, it is like a, a whole different console. I mean, Chrono Trigger blows Final Fantasy VI out of the water when it when it comes to graphics and stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and and yeah, you you you, you mentioned uh, you know being able to tell a time traveling story without getting too mind fucky when I went to start playing Chrono Trigger, like my biggest fear was that like this time travel thing is they're, they're going to milk it for all it's worth. Everything is going to get confusing and, and there's going to be like really annoying puzzles involved. There's none of that. It is so easy to follow the storyline in that game. And, but it's like, there's, it's almost like, I mean, it's really easy to follow the storyline. Like I said, there's nothing super complex, but if you want to start looking at it with a magnifying glass, then you you can find a bunch of complexities. Then it can um, it can get mind fucky in a good way. Right. Yeah. In a good way. So there's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. But it's cool because the game doesn't make you have to. It doesn't force you to pay attention to those things. No. It they you know you can have a simple run through of the game without having to worry about any of that stuff. Which is it's it, it's really cool that they chose to make it that way to where you can. You can choose to take everything as it is, or you can scrutinize things. So, like, like a prime example is there's an alternate ending um, when you go back to 65 million BC and you get defeated. It, like, if you lose to Azela, there's an alternate ending where like the reptites take over and like humankind is just non, pretty much non-existent. And I'm not sure about this because I haven't played Chrono Cross, 
but I'm pretty sure that that alternate timeline somehow plays into some aspect of Chrono Cross. I'm not going to tell so, you because I don't want to give it away, but you, that's yeah, an I'm awesome way of thinking. That's an awesome way of thinking. <laughs> Chrono Cross was mind-fucking. Really? Like, in, in good and bad ways. There's parts in that, like, where you, you kind of had to connect the dots, and they what they did is, in Chrono Cross, they took a game called Radical Dreamers. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've I have never played it recently. personally, <laughs> but they took yeah. that game and then they mixed it with Chrono Trigger, the Chrono Trigger universe, and it just okay. became a blur. It became a blur of all sorts of different stuff, and right. and in some aspects you're like, wow, this is great. There's some th- this explains this, that, and the other thing. In other instances, you're like, what the hell is this about? Why did yeah. that happen? You know. So the music in Chrono Cross is more or less everything's remixed from the first game really and it's they, if they my opinion if and if you played the first game and thought they can't make this any better they made it better so you're a fan of chrono cross i'm assuming that i'm right? a fan of the music in chrono cross okay <laughs> i like chrono cross as a game okay. for entertainment yeah. value it's a good yeah game. oh i actually played chrono cross mm-hmm. a little bit of it like, like way back in the day when i was a kid and I made it all the way to like some ghost ship thing where you have to do the mini game where you use monsters to fight other monsters instead of like your your party members. Huh. I don't know if this rings a bell or not. I mean, I, I'm sure it's it doesn't. Been I haven't. It's been it. forever oh. since I played that game. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's as far as I got when I was a kid. So there's. I, I probably was like maybe like three hours into the game. So I know there's it. like there's like 50 different characters or something in it, which is like mildly intimidating. Oh, it is, but. and some of them are, like, different versions of characters from Chrono Trigger, and some of them are from, supposedly, again, I can't tell you with all certainty, but from um, Radical Dreamers, and, mm-hmm. and it, it's cool, like, if you look at the maps, there's you can go online and look, and there's all sorts of different theories and and, and ideas and this, that, and the other thing yeah. of what, what is what and how this matches up with this, and... And, right. and it does, and some things there are just concrete from the game, and then there's other things it's just like, how does what, huh? Have you have you ever have you played Xenogears? Slightly, and I barely Slightly. remember. Like I okay. I think I played how many of the games are there? I, I well, it's kind of complicated because they're like related, but they're not because he like it's a Square Enix property, mm-hmm. but then like the creator went uh, formed Monolith Soft and released the Xeno Saga games. There's yeah. three of those on the PlayStation Two. You mean the movies? I've got all three of those. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was just gonna ask you how how mm, the amount of mind fuckingness in Chrono Cross would compare to Xeno Gears because uh, that that yeah, like I said, that's a trip too. I've played Xeno Saga. That yeah. I can remember, I've I've if I played maybe a bit Xeno Gears, and that was like from a friend who had it back when I was a teenager. Yeah. Xeno Saga, I can remember more, and I know that's mind fucky as hell. So yeah, uh, if I can, could, if you put the two on like separate levels or on the same level or whatnot, I'd say still Xeno Saga doesn't have anything on Chrono Cross. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like it's not like like blow your mind stuff, but it's just like. It just makes you think, like, oh, well, th- this is what happened to that character, you know? Because at the yeah. end of uh, at the end of of uh, Chrono Trigger, you're wondering what happened to Ma- Magus, Magus, whatever, or Sh- yeah. or Scala, Shala, whatever you want to call it. You know, they, yeah. these 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 games didn't have voice actors, so we had to kind of make up our own names for them. You know, the the, the Magus character is what I call them. Uh, you know, whatever happened to them afterwards, because those were two of the, like the the most I don't know like, compelling characters to me. So and that that's yeah. comes goes to my next question. As far as uh, Chrono Trigger, what's your favorite character? I I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would say that probably I think Robo is pretty cool. I, I really Prometheus. enjoy Prometheus. He, yeah, he's so goofy that when he does that spin thing and his arms are up in the air, <laughs> it's hilarious. He's like, oh, it's a little happy robot. And then, uh, yeah, and then some of the stuff that happens to him in the in his timeline, like getting mauled by all those robots and like thrown into the grinder. Yeah, it's kind of he, sad. Like it, it's, yeah. you know, like how can you be sad for a a, to, a automaton? But at the same time, like this, it's it's uh, such a good story that and yeah, you can see that this thing has you know, this robot has uh, some sort of feelings because he's upset that freaking these robots are turning on him. They're his brothers and sisters. They can you be. At this, you've got to throw in a robo, his little sound effect. When you first encounter uh, Gato. It, there's actually like an old Chrono Trigger, like 16 minute, like OVA, that was a promotional, like mini anime. 
and you actually get to hear how Gato's song goes. Like that was like the big question. Microphone. Yeah. 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 My yeah. name is Gato. I have metal joy. I, I could never get yeah. it right. I tried to sing it so many times, and I could never right. get it right. So I was always interested in how it actually sounded. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. And I'm. I don't know if. I mean, it may just be like that. This robot was like a first version of Gato, but in this in this 16 minute promotional OVA. His name is like Sanchez or something like that, which That's is which is awesome. which is cool. I was curious how it went too because when I when I was streaming it, my all you know my my viewers were like, "Oh, you need to sing that for us," and I'm like, "I don't even know how I would do that." So your favorite your favorite character is actually Robo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Robo was really cool. He had a he's very noble. He has a lot of uh, a lot of moments in the game that are really cool, especially when he uh, when he rebuilds that forest. Mm, oh yeah, he actually sacrifices yeah. what I can't remember, but a long a long time a long time, and he's rebuilding the forest, and that's that's a really cool part of the game. And that's a part a good part of Chrono Trigger that actually is kind of is really good is that you do things and it affects the future. You know, mm-hmm. like the sunstone thing, and uh, if I'm, I'm correct, because you get it as a moonstone, you put it in this altar, it becomes a sunstone later on. You can uh, yeah use it to make some pretty badass weapons and or armor. Yeah, and then uh, you can save Luca's mom's legs or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't know if like her legs got ripped off or if she just got like ate up by a machine. Yeah. You want to talk about feeling like you failed someone? Fail that moment, like oh god. Right. Man, I, I failed it, but you know what? It is not my fault because I'm playing the PS1 port, mm-hmm. and I don't have the same buttons as the NES controller. That's trying to so tell you which way. Yeah, that didn't make any sense to me. And it, again, that's just story stuff that that you can do. That I mean, you can go back and make everything happily ever after if you wanted to. Yeah, beautiful. Which, yeah. by the way, uh, bringing up Chrono Cross again. Uh, I'll go, again, I'll call him Prometheus. He he, he has an impact in that see that man i've read a couple different things and going back to xena saga you you heard me you heard me say it i I said you know those three movies because really Mm -hmm. that's what they were that was the joke between me and a few of my friends when we first started playing it was that they're interactive movies i've uh i've actually never played really any of them i played like a little bit of the first one Mm -hmm. when i was a kid and i quit a lot of the jrpgs that i cover i played at one point and quit Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, Xenosaga episode one. That was that's the only one I played. And yeah, I quit like maybe two hours into the game. That game was hard. Yeah, for don't a feel kid. bad. I, I beat I, I beat the first one I believe, and then the first, the two after that I was super excited about. I finally bought you know I bought them when it came out, and I yeah. bought it. Played the second one. I hate this. I feel so bad saying this, but I got bored of it. Like I I was I just kind of it wasn't boring per se. Maybe I just had less patience when i was younger yeah and i was just like oh this are these other games that are coming out that i want to play and i it just sat on the shelf after a while same thing with three right. you know and i tried yeah. three and i never beat two so i just the interest was not there i've heard i've read that like two is totally different than the than, the, than one in three um like one of the selling points on the back of the case which i i I, mean, I have a copy of it i don't have the first two yet but uh one of the selling points is something it says something like uh shops have made a return to the game and something else so i'm yeah i i'm pretty sure that two is a totally different experience than three i can't remember so i can't tell you it's been so long yeah it's the the games were good in their own aspect i had i had fun with them but it was and the storyline was very riveting like it felt like it felt like a very gory anime yeah yeah i could see i remember one of the scenes in the first one is like the ship is under attack by the Gnosis, mm-hmm. and Cosmos has like she like materializes some gigantic Gatling gun and like shoots through one of your party members to hit an enemy mm-hmm. because math, math she like calculated it mathematically and that was like the most successful way to take down the enemy was to just shoot through just somebody kill straight up murder someone. But uh, the Xeno the Xeno series really all of them um, they have a really cool setting. There's not a lot of JRPGs that take place in outer space in ships and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Star Ocean is kind of, kind of the same thing. But in my experience with Star Ocean, it's always like you you start in a ship and then something happens and then you end up on some little planet that's like in the medieval ages and that's the game. Then I played Star Ocean until the end of time and ended up quitting that one too when I was a kid. It doesn't make sense. I love JRPGs, but 
I've rage quitted like half of them in existence for some reason. Well, when you're younger, like I said, I, for some reason it seems like we we get older and our our patience grows. Like we're like, oh yeah, yeah. And, and and of course the nostalgia as well. Like especially for me, right. I go back and play something like Chrono Trigger, and I'm like, I remember when I played this with my friends in high school, yeah, and all that good exactly. the good memories come back. And exactly, I, and I think that's what it is a lot for me too. You know why I do the channel and all, all that is is to just go back and revisit memories. RPGs are just a great a great they tell good stories they tell they you know you can talk to your friends about them it's almost like yeah. you can go to your friends and tell like battle stories that you're in you know like you know right. oh yeah we had this great battle with 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 lavos and you know all this this that and the other thing and oh yeah, yeah. first time i died but the second time i got him you know? <laughs> the first time playing final fantasy 7 i was like ill leveled i wasn't leveled enough and that's how I do yeah. things, I, especially when I was younger. I didn't. I hated going and just in power leveling. I hated going out and just right. level, level, level. I wanted to get, unless I had to, but I yeah. wanted to get there on the level I was and get that difficulty. So I right. get. We got the Sephiroth, and it was literally a three-hour battle. Yeah, that that's a lot funner than how it is if you're at the appropriate level. Level what ninety-nine or whatnot, just psh, yeah. Done. Even like even like mid sixties or seventies, it's it's like really this is. This is it? Yeah. So that's cool, yeah. Here comes a hard question. Okay. Those of you watching, you can answer as well. Who is the better villain, Kefka or Sephiroth? And why? Well, my in my personal opinion, I mean, it, well, <laughs> shit. This would be a lot easier to answer if I've never played Final Fantasy VI, and I just yeah. knew of Kefka as the clown guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, spoiler, uh, if anyone out there hasn't played and beaten Final Fantasy VI. So, like, here's here's the problem. Sephiroth looks and acts like a villain. He plays the part, but he doesn't destroy the world. Kefka is a walking joke, but he actually succeeds in destroying the world. So, it's like... More or less becomes a god. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean... I would say that Kefka is the more successful villain, but Sephiroth is the cooler villain. What if we melded the two? Uh, if we meld the two, uh, whatever is going on in that game is going to come out into the real planet, probably. <laughs> Kefka real Roth. Kefka Roth. Oh my god, that actually <laughs> has a deep freaking ring it to totally it. It totally does. Kefka Roth. Oh, yeah. And you're right. Yeah. He probably he'd probably take over all of the Final Fantasy worlds. Right? Yeah. You you get done playing that game, you put in under like a different JRPG, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, the final boss in that one's kept her off. off. You're in uh, Kingdom Hearts with Sora trying to save the worlds and stuff, and here comes Kefka yeah. just ruining everything. It's there's like some aspects to Kefka that like don't really make sense. Um, like, what is his motivation? He's nuts. Why does he want to do what he does? He's just crazy. Well, it's you know why he's crazy, right? Why? He was one of the first that they experimented with the uh, uh, the magic stuff. Really? Yeah, he was a human. He was a human guinea pig at one point, if I remember I correctly. So he, that drove him insane. Okay, that could be true. Uh, I feel like I at some point. There's a there's dialogue about how there was like three magic tech knights. Mm -hmm. Got to be something in there that explains why Kefka's a crazy clown man. Son of a submariner, and it, it, and Kefka, in my opinion, is probably the more successful uh, bad guy. Oh successful yeah, villain. Hand, hands down for yeah. sure. Definitely the more successful villain. I mean, it, towards the end, I mean that last speech that they give towards Kefka where he's like why do you keep rebuilding I keep tearing things down why do you keep rebuilding at that point yeah. I think he's just trying to figure out like hey I'm, I'm trying to destroy you guys let it happen and he's like yeah. why what what's this why is hope so powerful I think that's he's trying to figure that out and, and that that again good writing I called it underrated in a Facebook group and I had like 10 million people like attack me I remember you saying that I remember seeing that like do you yeah, yeah there's I, a lot of Final Fantasy 6 fan people out there and there are. I know what you meant you explained what you meant by saying that yeah to me it's underrated because the game itself is it's a very iconic JRPG it's like one of the first Final Fantasies that has like a fully fledged like legitimate story with like very legitimate characters Final Fantasy 4 pretty much did all these things too but final fantasy 4 was very short and it was you know it was 
fairly simple and, and a straightforward kind it of It wasn't story. one. Here's some crystals. you got to save the world. Good luck. Exactly. Yeah. But the reason why I call it underrated is because, like, if you go to, like, any run-of-the-mill Final Fantasy group, everyone's talking about 7, 8, and 9, and 10. You know what I mean? Those are, like, the four heavy hitters. But there's nothing that separates 6 from the rest of those games aside from the graphics. And that is the barrier that, ke- that keeps a lot of, like, younger gamers from, from going back and experiencing it. And to me, that's why I, I would describe it as underrated. No, yeah, when you said it, I understood. Anyway, everyone's like, oh, they got all offended like I meant that as a bad thing. Yeah. No, no, that's a good thing. Yeah, you were complimenting the game, and that's understandable. Yeah. There's, And there's a lot to be complimented on that game. The storyline was great. Right. The music was amazing, you know, especially for its yeah. time. <laughs> Super nerdy fun fact here. Mm-hmm. If any Star Wars fans are out there that are watching hey, this, when Rey goes down into that pit and looks at that big shiny mirror and sees herself, that scene is, I swear, it is taken directly from Final Fantasy IV with Cecil. Oh, you went somewhere else, but go on. Oh, okay, yeah. Cecil goes into that cave, and he's the Dark Knight, and he sees himself in the in the crystal, like a reflection of himself, and then he has to face himself, just mm-hmm. like Ray did. Yes. And then he becomes the paladin. But what I thought yeah. you were going with is, do you remember the name of the Magitek Knights that were with Terra in the beginning of the game? Oh, yeah, Biggs and Wedge. Biggs and Wedge were also in... Star Wars. Yeah, the, uh, the first trilogy. Yes. Um, they were uh, oh, they were friends of Luke. There's a General Pyatt in some JRPG. No, I just remembered. Yeah, there's a General Pyatt in Final Fantasy VIII. He's the uh, dude that runs the the so, the the space station. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. There, but obviously, you know, the, these writers are big fans of of the Star Wars movies. Yeah. And, and that, right. that, and that, you get to see that little wink to the audience. And if you, if you like, dive into that even further, um, and this is one of the reasons why I think like Final Fantasy as a whole has been so successful in the United States and the mm-hmm. West. The the creators, like the main guys, Hironobu Sakaguchi, Nobuo Uematsu. But anyway, the main dudes that like did Final Fantasy, they're 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 actually really hardcore into like the West, like. Uh, Nubu Uematsu was like he, he's he likes Led Zeppelin. He he. There's a lot of uh, like American and English bands that, huh. that he takes inspiration from. David Bowie was also a huge influence on the creators of Final Fantasy. In Final Fantasy VII, in the North Crater, there's actually a monster that you can fight that is literally David Bowie, and then like the dog human hybrid thing that was on the one cover of one of the David Bowie albums. Yeah. That's like another monster with that monster anyway. <laughs> my, my basic point is, is when you start diving down the rabbit hole, you start with Biggs and Wedge, and you start finding more and more weird little nods to Western culture. Oh, uh, favorite character in Final Fantasy VI? I would have to say Edgar. I really like Edgar. The, uh, the womanizer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the Zap Brannigan of, of the Final Fantasy universe. Right? Yeah. But he, but the thing is, is like I think between the two, I think that that Edgar knows he's he he's I think Edgar knows what he says is lame. Yeah, I think Edgar is a lot more self aware than Zap Brannigan. Yeah, sure. Zap Brannigan so far into himself is that there's no there's no getting his head own head out of his ass. You know. Yeah. Do you ever play the uh, Kingdom Hearts games? Man, not really. No. Um, I played a little bit of the first one. It, it just wasn't really. What was the turn really off to him? Honestly, I, I'm like a huge Final Fantasy VIII. Like, if I had to pick like one, well, you asked me this earlier. Now I'm changing my answer. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Legend of Dragoon is a really good JRPG. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But Final Fantasy VIII is probably like my all-time favorite. Like that game. Like, dude, I'm gonna be buried with that game. Like, it's gonna be in my <laughs> coffin with me. I love that game. But probably like the first big turnoff for me in in, in Kingdom Hearts is probably like the them renaming Leon a squall to Leon, Leon yeah. and redoing his his like character design. Well, they did the same thing to Eris. Know. Like, why would you do that? You're, you're, it's not confusing enough. Like, so are on. you are you Team Eris or Team Era? I'm Team gotta... Final Fantasy Seven. Okay. Like, <laughs> if if I have to pick. Don't get me wrong. I love I love Kingdom Hearts. I like what they yeah, became. Yeah. I like what yeah. what came from it. I, it's it's got a really good story. I didn't know if you, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Leonard Nimoy played one of the bad guys. What really? Yeah. He played he played uh, oh uh, wow Xehanort. This will blow your mind as well. Mark Hamill played the good guy in that game. Really? He played the opposite of him. Yes. And which 
was this all of the Kingdom Hearts that these dudes were oh, voice actors? No, no, it was just one, and it was one of the handhelds, which you can get in the. Okay. You actually get with the the new ones that came yeah. out, the like the remastered HD. There's definitely like a lot. Like, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of Kingdom Hearts, but like I I rip on it a lot, but I I also <laughs> respect it. It is cool to see how like so many worlds collide in that game. You know, JRPGs with Disney characters, and then apparently Hollywood actors voicing characters that's great i never even knew that so i mean yeah you definitely got to give some cred to to kingdom hearts the it's big turnoff really... for me i was afraid that disney was gonna just take it and run with it because disney likes to just i mean we nowadays we see it in and i say this all the time we see it in their movies we see it in like the the uh, marvel Did cinematic you? universe there we go mcu yeah and i just they just grab it and it, like how many thor movies do we need you know, they just they just ring it just for all the money it, they can get, it. and they yep they buy well, once they've milked all that they can milk out of something they just go buy it, something else buy a bunch of new IPs. Oh hey like, look Star Wars yeah you all yeah. did you ever wonder what what uh, Han Solo's backstory was? Do you ever wonder you know? And that's really what that's what's really crazy what I to me doing. though. Like I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan, and what what blows my mind is like the actual main movies that they make are all garbage. But I haven't seen the Han Solo movie, but I hear it's pretty good. I, my opinion, and, it's it's and it's it's good. Like it's cool. The, yeah. the characters were great, but yeah, like it, well, it could have been better. They explore the Castle Run thing, which is cool. And a lot of older fans of, of the Star Wars, you know, series are they they know about that. You know yeah. what I mean? They, they've probably always been curious. So it's cool that they explore that. And then I know like there's a bad guy that makes a cameo towards the end. You know, I don't know. I, like, I think that the best one that they've released out of all of them so far, like the new Disney ones, is uh, Rogue One. Oh, what's it called? Yes, Rogue I'm, One. I'm Rogue gonna agree one with you on that. So good, man. I don't know. It just took me back to the originals. It, it they nailed it. It they felt nailed like it. the originals. Yes. I'm gonna sound like a lot of other YouTubers out there when it comes to the, the Star Wars. When it comes to like the main movies, like you know, episode what seven, eight, nine, seven, eight so yeah. far. Uh, yeah. It just feels like they're playing it safe. They're just like, oh, we're gonna go with the same thing that worked in the past, and it, you know, it's okay. But at the same time, yeah. like, at the same time, come on, Disney, you did you did Rogue One, and you added these new characters, and you added this, that, and the other thing. It was great. Right. We know you you're capable of this greatness. Put this in these movies, like. But it's yeah. like at the same time, like they're playing it safe, but then they do really stupid shit that makes no sense. Like, they kill Han, but they don't kill Han on screen with like Luke Skywalker should have been there. You know how impactful that would have been if like Luke, Chewie, Leia, everyone was there to well, see Well, said they die. didn't want him to be there. They wanted to be like the question the big the big question to be was where's Luke? What's going on with Luke? And then right. we finally we finally figure out where Luke's at and he's just like I'm fucking tired. And then and then he finally decides, I'm going to do something. And what he, he force projects himself? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was I this is the son of the chosen one. In fact, he might be the chosen one himself. And yeah. force projecting himself was what his final thing to do was. I don't care if you're 50. I don't care if you're 15. It shouldn't have been a way to die. The the projection itself was cool, but the fact that that killed him, that's 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 bullshit. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it's bullshit. And, then, and it, you know, like another another thing that really, like really bothered me is in the last to like towards the end of the second movie. You know when they go down onto that weird frozen slash desert planet thing yeah the ship that's up in space i wit like they why i don't understand why they didn't let general akbar be the dude to like crash it into the other ship like do like the ramming thing and blow himself up instead it was like this random chick that's only been on screen for like 10 minutes that we only met in that in that yeah and uh, I don't know, like and then, like General Akbar, the way he dies is like I don't know, like a laser hits the side of the ship and he just gets blown out and sucked <laughs> anticlimactic. Out yeah, like, boom, gone. It's like I'd they be... play it safe, but then they also play it like safe in a really stupid way. Then we I mean, let's yeah. talk about Ray for a second. Ray was like, she could be a Skywalker. She could be this. She could be that. She could even be yeah. like, like, she even be Obi Wan Kenobi's grandchild. Right. But we get ah, she ain't nothing. Yeah, I. I don't understand. Like, I think Ray's character could be awesome. They're just, it, they're just things just don't make sense. It's like in the first movie, she's already using the Force. Mm -hmm. She used the Force to convince the, the Stormtrooper people to let her out of the prison cell. It's you yeah. know, I mean, she goes and trains with Luke. What does she even like display on screen 
that's new after she trains what with Luke. What real training did she have with Luke, other than him know, bitching at her about, you know, I just want the Force to die. I think the I'm best part of, of that movie was the return of Yoda. Yeah, yeah, that that, yeah, that and was that pretty was much it. the high point. I yeah, I I agree. That was that was pretty much the highlight. That one scene of Luke and Yoda talking because it's like you know, obviously Disney only cares about money. You know what I mean? They're a huge corporation, and they milk everything that they have until it's all dry, and then they go and they buy something new. Great We've example. That. Great example so, being the live action movies they're coming out with. I don't yeah. understand why they they had an opportunity to milk all of the nostalgia juice out of it. They had Luke, Han, Chewie, Yoda, and none of it. You well, would think that they would just they'd make like 15 Star Wars movies, just turn it into a freaking sitcom of those characters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, let, me, let me throw this at you. What makes more money? The old nostalgic fans who are probably not going to be around for another 20 years, 30 years, or what have you, or the new fans they're going to make or attempt to make with all these new characters with porgs and shit like that. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's what they're looking at. They're looking at, they're trying to make a new fandom. I don't know which one would make the most money, but I know that the, the other ones that remember all the old Star Wars movies, they don't got many years left. So you might as well suck all the money out of their bank accounts now <laughs> before they die and take the money with them. They're, they're the looking. The fans are not close to death, I promise. Yeah, they're not. They're, just, they're looking to get more, more money out of more new people is what they're doing. Yeah, they got to sell them toys. And that's that's how I'm looking. Exactly. The, there's some there's something about like movies from like the 80s and like early 90s where it's like there's so much less CGI and a lot more creativity with props they were practical. and camera angles. They're very practical. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Those that was like the golden era of movies. Now everything's just, you know, I mean there's good great movies out today, but well, there's, there's definitely a lot more CG and a lot more smoke and mirrors being added on computers. Well, that Rather segues than, back. Know. That segues back to what we were talking about with Disney, with the with these yeah. live action movies, like The Lion King. You think in right. twenty, thirty years that that's going to look good? No, it's going to look terrible. <clears throat> Is there anything you want to touch base on before we go? Um, I think we pretty much talked about just about everything in, in that we can in, think in, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I really enjoyed being on. Uh, For sure, it's been awesome talking to you. I think that we kind of have almost the same wavelength on a lot of different subjects, which is oh cool. for sure. I could I could tell once uh, I challenged you to to that uh, that eat off with uh, what was it uh, ramen? That's what it was. Oh ramen. yeah, that, that back and forth we thing we did on Twitter. Yeah, yeah that was funny. <laughs> Dude, the best ramen in the world. I made it in college. You got to get a Taco Bell large cup, and you got to get the creamy ranch chicken. Microwave that shit on high for five minutes, and then let it sit for like two or three minutes, and it's like it turns into chicken Alfredo. I stand by that. It's got to be in a Taco Bell cup. It's got to be in a Taco Bell. It has to be. <laughs> if it doesn't, it loses that Taco Bell feeling. All right. Once again, guys, we'll see you next week on episode uh, 117. We'll, uh, we'll, like I said, we'll see you next week. Uh, we hope you guys stay nerdy, stay sexy. Always.